Thank you very much, Eric. <clears throat> and uh, I want to start by congratulating uh, Jeff and Kyle. Uh, look at the foundation you've laid, and thank you to the entire Capital for Kids uh, C4K team for what you guys are doing. And I want to echo Amber's comments that everybody in this room needs to recognize, well, the needs for kids' mental health charities are only growing the geopolitical tensions that have been creating traumas everywhere in the world are accentuating these needs and everybody in this room needs to turn over their card and make a donation and I'd like to see 120 percent participation in the thermometer breaking. What is the extra 20 if you've donated? Please consider reaching deeper and add to that. So briefly what we do at Vision is we're focused on publicly traded real estate securities. Both equities and debt, we operate long and short, so our strategy is not reliant on being bulls for real estate. We seek to outperform, irrespective of real estate supply and demand fundamentals or valuations. We seek where relevant and appropriate to be active, value-add, strategic investors. We don't seek to be hostile. It can take you 30 years to build the relationships. You can lose them in one day. But if we can marry our real estate industry experience with our capital market expertise, and relationship to add value, we look to do that. So the Vision Funds have benefited from 20 takeovers in our portfolio holdings in the last 15 years. We have flexibility within limits to invest globally. Our preference is to stick to North America because we seek to be hands-on, tour the real estate. Um, but the core of what we do is to take advantage of certain inefficiencies in our space through a top-down and a bottom-up approach the result of which our mantra is we seek to buy real estate cheaper in the stock market than one can in the property market. So what our team spends its time doing and uh, the advantages of our strategy is by definition you can't buy real estate cheaper in the property market than the property market. Why do we need to be a 17th entity to compete against a pension fund, a REIT, an entrepreneur with too much money in his or her genes to buy property in an auction hosted by CBRE or Colliers, when we can buy real estate at 80, 70, 60 cents on the dollar in the stock market, have professional management, have corporate governance, have transparency, get geographic diversification, get property type diversification, get access to best in class properties. Nobody calls us in the middle of the night to fix the heater and we have liquidity. And while liquidity is always paramount, it's years like you know, March 2020 or when Brexit came to the forefront or October 2023 where liquidity takes on a different dimension. But the opposite is true if the fundamentals are negative or deterioration, deteriorating or valuations are excessive. You can't do anything about that in the property market. We can by being short. We launched our funds July 2008. That was not a fun period of time. Um, and our funds are up about 350%, excuse me, 350% or just over 10% compounded annually. We don't use any long side leverage. Uh, so the most important thing about vision, the absolute returns are solid, but our risk adjusted returns, what we strive for, uh, you can see that number of statistics, our up market, down market capture ratio, four to one. Uh, and if you think about the space we invest in publicly traded real estate securities, four of the prior 10 years where the REIT indices were negative or broad market indices were negative or both, we posited positive returns and I think that is really the core of our strategy. Our recommendation today are the units of publicly traded first capital REIT. We believe this is the highest quality grocery store necessity-based retailer globally. Bold statement, even for vision. Let's unpack it. Firstly, a little introduction. Nine billion dollar enterprise value, less than three billion dollar equity cap today. 22 million square feet of income producing in place grocery store anchored shopping centers. 24 million square feet of incremental density, primarily to build apartments on those shopping centers. In all 98% in six major growing markets, uh, two thirds Toronto, Montreal, three quarters Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, 98% if you add in Calgary, Edmonton, and Ottawa. 
Um, not only do we believe this is the highest quality grocery store portfolio anchored shopping center in the world, but it is trading at the biggest discount to net asset value amongst its peers. So why? Let's unpack this. Uh, we believe at Vision and we've demonstrated that the blood to our strategy and success in real estate investing is not some of the cliches you hear, location, location, location. You can have the best located office building in Calgary. How's that going for you? Not so good. Um, interest rates, important, trumped by supply and demand. Supply and demand with a forward-looking view is the key, in our view, to successful real estate investing. So let's unpack this. Demand, population growth, extraordinary population growth in this country. So the first reason why this is the best, it's in Canada and it's not in the United States. Canada has over two and a half times the population growth of the United States, pierced 40 million people this year and amongst the fastest pace of growth globally. GDP, last 15 years, outpacing the United States. Employment growth, been stellar over the last 15 years, and since February 2020, 90% higher employment growth in Canada than the United States. These are demand drivers. Supply and demand, population growth, employment growth, drive real estate demand. You see it in real estate sales. Despite the growth in e-commerce sales, physical retail is doing very well, thank you very much. In fact, the, uh, even though there's return to work, the hybrid flexible schedule has created more visits, those community-based shopping centers. And you look at First Capital's niche, community necessity-based retail, you can't get your hair cut online. You can't get your manicure online. Uh, you can't get your teeth cleaned online. Let's bring in supply. Demand is solid. The growth in supply has been diminishing. And you can see it stark in this, in this chart. So over the last 10 years, you've had 90% higher population growth than the growth in new supply. So no surprise then, the amount of retail space per capita has been declining in Canada. So today at 17.3 square feet per capita, it's 30% less than the United States at 25.3. Vacancy rates, for years, the retail vacancy rate in Canada has blessed the United States, about 374 basis points today, and CoStar projects that to grow to a differential of 4.6% over the next five years. Rents, cash flow, this is the key. Rents have been growing because of this imbalance between supply and demand. And again, CoStar forecasts this to increase. So supply and demand. Let's come back to First Capital. Again, 144 properties, 90% grocery store anchored. And unlike some of the peers that do have a lot of grocery stores, they have a lot of standalone grocery stores. First Capital is primarily grocery anchors where you get that lift from the Starbucks in the bank, that necessity-based retail attended to the shopping centers. 96% occupancy. Now, we talked about the Canadian population growth, but you know, I've had the privilege to be involved with First Capital through various uh, renditions for 20 years, and I've seen this portfolio curated in the highest growth urban markets in Canada, the best locations in the best growing cities. And so when you look at the population growth in First Capital's markets, it's even higher than Canada, 7.7% over the last five years versus Canada at six and a half, and according to Statistics Canada, United States at two. So no surprise. Portfolio demographics, whereas the peers have 150,000 people within five kilometers of the shopping centers, First Capital is double, 300,000 people within five kilometers. You see it in the tenants. Even our friends from the United States or elsewhere, elsewhere will recognize these names. You don't see fashion tenants here, no power centers. And over 70% of First Capital's top 40 tenants are investment grade rated. You see it in the performance of the real estate. You see it in the renewal leasing spreads, when those leases renew. You see over the last 15 years, and you see over this year, first six months, First Capital has the highest renewal leasing spreads amongst its peers. And over the last 15 years, they've also demonstrated the highest same property net operating income growth amongst their closest Canadian peers. Now, I mentioned a couple of times about this density. 24 million square feet. 
more than their existing large Canadian portfolio. It's important to unpack this a little bit. This is net, so they might have to change around a store, or, but this is net incremental to the 22 million square feet. And it's not greenfield sites, suburban sites that maybe one day you develop it. This is attendant to the best urban locations in these six growing Canadian markets. 70% of which has in place or in progress advanced zoning. Now, I said attendant. Here's an exception. There's a photo in here. This is the Christie Cookie site. This is not attendant to an existing shopping center. But you get the sense of the opportunity in this rendering where the location next to a future GO station node, the Gardner Expressway, overlooking the lake. Um, so first capital, you know, not all development is created equal. First capital typically has the best sites in the best locations in the best major urban markets. And if you're a real estate investor, you recognize that one of the most cherished real estate investments is known as a covered land play. That 20-foot storefront on Bloor Street between Avenue and Spadina, or Madison Avenue and 50th Street, where you might accept a 3% return because you're in the middle of a key development block and you're going to benefit from the upside of development. Well, First Capital might be the best covered land play in the planet because you have 24 million on top of 22 million and you're getting a 6.5% dividend yield while you wait to see this value serviced. This is some of the stuff they've done. Uh, this is one in Toronto, 43,000 square foot retail center which was transformed in 267,000 of square feet of apartments, 333 apartment units, created $54 million of value and a 28% levered return. And you can see its location attendant to a trimodal transit access point, GO Station, TTC, and Mississauga Transit. These are some examples of what's coming, some of the larger development opportunities. And it's $75 per square foot buildable, well off peaks you've seen in downtown Toronto, over $200 a square foot buildable. You can see the value creation potential in First Capital's portfolio, two sites in the Toronto area, one in Vancouver. Tailwinds to this. We have a federal government that has an immigration policy with no housing policy. Well, they're waking up to it slowly. They removed the GST to build purpose-built apartments. The government of Ontario matched it by removing the provincial sales tax. CMHC is stepping to the plate and went from $40 billion to $60 billion in favorable terms for uh, financing multifamily construction. And then you have municipalities in all levels of government trying to facilitate this growth through density changes. Valuation. I mean, we've seen this movie before. The best quality grocery store portfolio we believe in the planet, trading at a 42% discount to its net asset value with a 6.4% dividend yield. Balance sheet is solid. Investment grade rating, 94% fixed rate debt, lots of liquidity. Look at it another way price per pound, price per square foot. You have some fairly recent transactions between $600 $1,300 a square foot. You can buy First Capital today on the Toronto Stock Exchange at $330 a square foot for their real estate. Now for years, you know, I've seen this, I advised them in its early days, I've seen this portfolio, I've been a long-term investor. We've been very long-term investors of First Capital. And for years, First Capital traded at premium to the underlying net asset value of its real estate and a premium to its peers. In recent years, this has not been the case. As a result of this, we've seen some activism uh, grow in the stock last year. I'm not going to take you through this. This was a lot of it in the public realm. Vision was uh, trying to be constructive through this process. Uh, the result heretofore has been some board refreshment. Mr. Paul Douglas, the guru of lending in, in real estate from 40-year veteran at TD, has become chair. Uh, we've had some board refreshment, including the appointment of Mr. Ira Gluskin uh, and Mr. Richard Nesbitt, both of whom are on Visions Advisory Board, have joined this board. Um, and we, we hope this begins to just the beginning of the story, not the end of the story. So I've had the privilege to be here on numerous occasions. And we, we thought it would be helpful to assess first capital in the light, not of what Vision is doing generally, but just the things we've talked about at Capitalize for Kids. 
Because every name that is on this list that we've talked to this audience about has reflected two things. A compelling supply and demand underlying picture and trading at a wide discount to net asset value. So we believed, and in each case, what happened was either the performance of management and growing the net asset value and the cash flow would result in increase in the share price, or the private market or public peers, the valuation discount will be so wide that in one case, as Eric mentioned, Brookfield showed up and bought general growth properties. In the other case, there was a merger where Prolog just merged with Liberty Property Trust, both at 20% premiums in very short order after the presentation I made. And because the difference between real estate and any other asset class in a meaningful way is the private market dwarfs the public market and there is arbitrage between the two. So just to wrap up, population growth, supply and demand, very favorable for this asset class. You have essential recession resistant tenants, far less susceptible to e-commerce. First Capital is applying a growth strategy to a defensive portfolio. Very significant incremental urban density to build apartments attendant to these properties, hence one of the best covered land plays globally. These are multi-generational assets in the best markets in this country, and you close the gap to net asset value, you have upwards towards 72% upside for an investment in first capital. So thank you very much for your attention and enjoy the conference. And please turn over your cards.